Welcome to Foundations TV, everybody. Our guest today is Dr. Jaydev Das Gupta, who is an author of a wonderful book, In Search of Immortality. And he is here today in our studio to share his personal journey. Welcome to the studio. Thank you, Gauri. I'm glad to be here. Pleasure to have you. Pleasure sure. to have you. Sure. So, um, I, first of all, I really enjoyed the chat we had off camera. <laughs> So I'm going to start off with the first question. Why don't you share a little bit about your background? Sure. I am by training, I'm a physicist. I had um, training in mathematics and biology. Most of my professional career have been a biologist. I, the experimental biology background started uh, from TIFR, which is Tata Institute of Fundamental Research in Bombay. From there, I came to Vanderbilt Medical Center and then to the Harvard Medical School, where I spent 10 years as a scientist. I had my own lab. I used to work on human immunology and cell biology, molecular biology. Before I uh, moved out from academia into industry, because I got interested in uh, the application of information technology into biological research, how this technology can be leveraged to improve the drug discovery process in pharmace pharmaceutical industry. And so in that context, for some time, I had my own uh, company for uh, web-based management of clinical trials. And um, I worked for a number of uh, consulting companies as a life sciences practitioner. I also worked in, some, in a company developing a product for pharmacovigilance. Uh, we are curating information from social media and developing a profile of drugs for uh, their safety and efficacy. Okay. So that's my background. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. So being a scientist, uh, I listening to all that and looking at this, now we need to put the two and two together. When did this start? Journey in philosophy. How did you get interested in that? That had been, uh, that had been going on for quite some time because uh, even when I was a student at Punjab University, Punjab University has a fascinating, very huge library. Absolutely. And that's yes. where yes. I first got some very good books on Indian philosophy, Buddhist philosophy. And uh, so um, aside from reading science and biology and physics, I started reading those things also. And uh, that uh, interest in Indian philosophy lasted um, throughout. So even when I was working as a scientist, I would spend some time almost every week reading about Indian philosophy. So that's how my interest, uh, I sustained, I kept maintaining my interest in this. So this philosophy. book is all based on the Indian philosophy, not much from the Western side? That's, okay. that's right. That's right. It is all about Indian philosophy because I personally feel when I read different Indian philosophical systems, I felt that they are quite self contained, do not have to supplement or any, bring any additional information from the Western philosophy to make them understandable. They are quite self-contained in themselves. Oh, okay, yeah. they're complete in itself. They, yes, they are. Once you read they, it, you understand are. a whole lot. They are, they are. Wonderful. They are very good systems. Now, uh, the, the name of the book, that's, that's an interesting one. So, In Search of Immortality, how did you come up with that name? <laughs> First of all, uh, the, the, um, my, uh, the intention behind the book yeah. uh, was to give the ideas, the core ideas of Indian philosophy, and show how that uh, the different ideas evolved over the last 3,500 or 4,000 years, starting from the Rig Veda, how those ideas evolved. But uh, so I initially, I named my book as an introduction to Indian worldview or Indian philosophy, but then. Um, uh, I also wanted to, uh, I did not want to make it just for philosophy students. I wanted this book to be uh, read by usual, regular people, educated people, those who are interested in learning about our system. And so uh, the editor basically thought it would be better if I gave a lighter mm. title to the book. And um, one of the sections here in the book is In Search of Immortality. And I was just thinking about what should we do about this title. My wife also suggested that I should give a lighter title to the book. Um, and so this is the title I came up Because the, throughout the journey or throughout the, our Indian philosophy, 
uh, finding immortality and freedom is the core idea. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. That's a, actually, uh, I'm so glad that you brought a copy of the book because I was going through it and, you know, obviously I just went through it for a few minutes, but it was interesting enough. It, it engaged me. It captured my attention. One of the reasons I, I think it did was uh, I saw some of your chapters, um, the heading of the chapters were in the form of a question. Who am I? You know, and uh, some of them were like, what is life? Why did God create the earth? And yes. things like that. So it's more like, where did the world come from? And so it's, it's very interesting. I think that immediately gets the attention of the reader. That's they right. want to find out because that, that kind of starts a little uh, process in their own mind, you know, gets them thinking. Uh, and then they want to find the answers. So that's that's really nice. That's very sure. good. Uh, and that's the, uh, that's the uh, reason that I gave these questions. A number of places throughout the book, mm -hmm. I've raised a number of questions just to pull the reader in instead of just glossing through the sub uh, right. substance and right. reading it, um, basically raising these questions. And of course, I'm addressing those questions later on. Uh, right. But I want uh, the reader to be engaged when they read it. It's, it's very beautifully written, and I, I honestly, I love the cover and the quality of uh, the printing and everything, too. Thank so it's, it's a great, Thank it you. looks really nice. So yes. now you did mention that this is not just for philosophy students, it is for a lot of different people. Yes, any educated uh, layperson who is interested in uh, sure. learning about Indian, Indian theory, because uh, okay. my experience shows that many people would like to know about yes. our uh, past, what our past philosophers have said mm -hmm. or done. But these the ideas are either in deep philosophy book, big fat books that somebody has to have the training and the patience to go through all these things. Sure. Or, uh, or uh, the other side of it is when people try to write in a lighter for, uh, fashion, they make it simple, uh, convert it into simple tales. Right. And, uh, that kind of loses the substance. So I try to bring the mythological tales also with philosophical, what is the philosophical side of it. So both ways I try to cover that, both mythology, psychology, and philosophy in it. Excellent, excellent. Now, um, the theory of karma is uh, so much well ingrained in the Indian philosophy. So could you talk a little bit about what your understanding of uh, karma is? <laughs> Karma is actually any, uh, as we understand, karma is both action and its consequence. And karma is, we look at it, the, that uh, if you do good karma, you get good results, and bad right. karma leads to bad results. Right. It's nothing but a principle of causality, if, as I look at it, mm -hmm. that every action has its effect. Right. And uh, in, in Indian philosophy, karma, as you said, it plays a very important role because there is constant emphasis on doing the right karma. But at the same time, because it's a causal process, it goes from one action to another action, finding liberation is a challenge because liberation is something that you come out of the karma cycle. That's how you, you feel liberated. And that is a challenge and that, that I have discussed in the book, that there are several means that have been proposed over the years. Uh, in some cases, there are, there's a, a path of knowledge that when you understand the ultimate reality, that gives you the liberation. That means it somehow uh, takes you out of the karma cycle. Or a, uh, another method is um, what is that uh, we call the karma without any, uh, any investment or any dispassionate action. And uh, that also uh, takes you out of the karma cycle. These are the hypothesis. Nobody knows it actually happens right, or not. Right, right. And the third path is the path of bhakti or devotion, that when you are devoted to a deity or a god and uh, give all your action, perform all your actions in the name of that god, mm -hmm. it is assumed that you are out of that uh, karma cycle. So this, these ideas have evolved over time exactly, from exactly. the Vedas to the Upanishads and later on to Bhagavad Gita, which is very heavy on the devotional side, though it has all three paths, path of knowledge, path of action, as well as path of uh, bhakti or devotion are uh, given in that book. But it, it champions essentially the bhakti path. Lovely, lovely. So what it seems to me from our discussion and from looking at the book, looks like uh, years and years of reading and gaining knowledge 
has been, uh, you know, compiled into something which is a simpler version of yes. uh, the Indian philosophy. And at any stage of our lives, if we have any questions about it, it's a good book to pick up and read and try to find answers that may apply to you as an individual. I would think so. I would love to <laughs> yeah, think so. Yeah. That it's a, it's a book where I have tried to give those central concepts of Indian philosophy right. um, and how they have evolved in a simple fashion that do not need any prior understanding of our religious sure. systems or yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. So, um, I'm sure after this, this, this discussion, you know, there will be people, listeners, viewers who would be interested in getting a copy of the book. So where can they find <laughs> your book? I, I, I published this book in India. Okay. So in India, it is on uh, Amazon India. Okay. So far, the book, uh, the editor has, uh, or the uh, publisher has said that uh, once the book comes here, then it will be put on Amazon okay. US also. But uh, there's a website created. Okay. Where, through which this book can be acquired here also. The website okay. is www.jaydevdasgupta.com. And this is J-A-I-D-E-V dasgupta.com. Wonderful. We'll share that as well with our oh, viewers. That's wonderful. Now, before we end the interview, I do want you to sign me a copy. Sure. <laughs> Since I have the author with me, I might as well. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you for being here today. And thanks for having me here. Pleasure.